That's how to do it with particles. But let's say we have a bunch more particles. The way this would work out is the x center of mass would be equal to the sum of xi from delta mi over big M, where this is the total mass, where we take the limit as delta mi goes to zero. What we're doing here is we're taking an object. Rather than particles, we're taking an object and we're splitting it into a bunch of little pieces. Each little piece has a mass delta mi. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as delta mi goes to zero. We're going to take that mass until it's infinitesimally small. That big. Just so you know, if you recall, this is an interval. The x center of mass for an object with shape is equal to 1 over the total mass, the integral of position with respect to mass. This is the definition of an integral. This is how we write it. So that would be in the x direction. We could have it in all sorts of different directions. We could have the r center of mass, just a more general, 1 over the total mass, the integral of r d m. So this is how to deal with objects with shape. So again, if you'll re recall, we talked about particles, but now we're taking and talking about an object with shape. Let's talk about how to work with this in practice. So we'll go through and do an example. Let's take a, we're going to figure out the center of mass of a triangle. So we have a triangle that looks like this. Now, we're going to have various sides of this triangle, side A, side B, and the hypotenuse is going to be side C. The triangle is also going to have a thickness, T, which is in this direction. I'm not going to try to draw it in three dimensions at the moment. I'll do so with that later. It'll be fun. Uh, so realize this does have a thickness, T. Um, and we're going to figure out the center of mass of this triangle. Notice this has a constant density. So it is a uniform triangle. We will often use the term uniform to describe something, and that means it has a constant uh, volumetric mass density. All right. Now, we are going to split this triangle into an infinitesimally large or infinitesimally small pieces, and there will be an infinite number of them, and they're each going to have a name, dm. So it's going to look like this. This guy is dm. So dm is a rectangular box. Now, the shape of the triangle itself is a triangle with a thickness t. But little dm, that we have an infinite number of these, is going to be um, actually a rectangular box. And its sides are going to be, it's going to be located a distance x from the x-axis. It's going to have a height of y. It as well will have a thickness of t and the width of it. Does anybody know what the width of this guy is going to be? He's a, he's a, it's a mass dm. Uh, is it approaching zero? It is. It's actually infinitesimally small. So what do we call that? dx. It has a width dx. So again, we're breaking the triangle into an infinite, infinite number of infinitesimally small little rectangular boxes. So we are going to figure out the x center of mass. So that's going to be equal to 1 over the total mass times the integral of uh, x with respect to mass. 
Now, you'll notice we have an issue here. We're taking the integral of x, which is a position with respect to mass. And that generally is the issue whenever you're trying to do one of these integrals. You have to figure out how to get x in terms of mass or dm in terms of x. So let's walk our way through how to do this. We're going to start out with the definition of volumetric mass density, which is the density that you're most familiar with, which is density equals mass per unit volume. That's just the generic equation. Let's make sure you understand that that would be equal to the total mass divided by the total volume. If we were take, to take the whole triangle and take its mass divided by its volume, that would be the density of the triangle. That would also be equal to dm divided by dv, or the mass of the infinitesimally small rectangular box divided by the volume of the infinitesimally small rectangular box. In other words, I can rearrange this so that dm is equal to rho times dv. Okay, we need to figure out dv. So what is the volume of the infinitesimally small rectangular box dm? What is the volume of that? Logi? What's its shape? The, no, no, remember this is, we're figuring out the volume of dv here, which is the volume of um, this dm. So what's the shape there? Uh, close, that would be two-dimensional. It also has the thickness. Also what? It's a rectangular box, remember, because it also has thickness. So it's not just a rectangle, but it's also a rectangular box. So what, in general, is the volume of a rectangular box? What's the equation for that? Stay. No, no, just the general, let's start with the general equation. Length times width times height, right? So realize when we're figuring out the volume of this, it's just going to be length times width times height. Now, specifically, what are the length, width, and height of this small rectangular box EM, which has a volume dv? Sierra. Uh, the height would be y is width dx. And times t, right? It's the one that I can't draw in the picture. So in other words, I'll just rearrange it. So the volume dv is equal to y times t times dx. So I can rearrange dm. dm then is equal to the density multiplied by dv, which is y times t times dx. So coming back to our original um, I don't want to do that yet, so I'm not going to quick do that yet. So if we come back to the density, we also had that density was equal to the total mass divided by the total volume of the triangle. I'm going to leave the total mass there, but what in general is the equation for the, what's going to be the equation for the volume of this triangle here, this triangular box? T. So the volume of the triangle box. Yes. Would it be? Um, are we assuming that the like the first triangle and the like the main triangle, like the x value is like um, stop for a second. Let me re let me just ask the question again. The total mass of the rectangle divided by the volume of the rectangle. So what's the volume of this whole rectangle? Do you want the basic equation for which Either one, just give me some. Um, one half base times width times thickness. Right, so one half base times height times the thickness. Okay, now in terms of the variables we have on the board. Nick? One half times A, the base, times the height, which is B, times the thickness, which is T. 
So now I can replace this into there, because that's the density. So dm is equal to the total mass divided by 1 half times a times b times t, time, this whole thing multiplied by y times t times dx. In other words, dm is equal to, let's see, uh, looks like a t cancels out, and we get the total mass times y divided by, actually we'll do 2 times the total mass times y, divided by ab times dx. So we come back up to our general equation. We still have 1 over mass total, the integral of x. We haven't done anything with that. But everything we did right here was to get d, to go from dm to dx. Because we couldn't integrate with respect to dm, but we can integrate with respect to dx. Right? We can integrate with respect to x. So now I can substitute it in here. 2 times mass total times y divided by a times b times Now, when we integrate, let's bring out stuff that does not depend on x so that we can realize what our variables are. So what can we take out from underneath the integral? Spencer? In other words, what in here is a constant and not a variable? It does not change with respect to position. y does change. If you look, this value y does change as a function of x. So we can't take y out. So, so far we've got a, b, and mass total. total mass and the 2 is just a number. So let's bring everything out. We've got 2 times mass total divided by mass total times a times b integral of x, y, dx. You can see we have mass total on the top and the bottom. So mass total cancels out. So we have right now that the x center of mass is equal to 2 over a <coughs> bless you, integral of x, y, dx. We can't yet integrate. Why not? What's the issue with trying to integrate this right now? What's that? There's a y. We can't take the integral of y with respect to x. So we need a relationship between y and x so we can substitute in something for y so that we have an x in there instead. Sierra? We could. Tangent or something? <laughs> Okay, I'll put a theta right here. I'll put tangent theta is equal to what is opposite theta? What is adjacent to theta? What is also opposite to theta? And a. In other words, y is equal to b over a times x. If you prefer, that's one way to look at it. If you prefer to use the equation y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, m would be equal to the rise over the run, and b, the y-intercept, would be equal to 0. So you would get y is equal to b over a times x. doesn't matter. Either way, it's the same thing. Just using the equation. Note the redundancy with the, unfortunately, this is b, the y-intercept, which is equal to 0, and this is b, which is the side of the triangle. You can handle them. Tip. Did you assume similar triangles? But that's what, actually what we did here. Tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. This is because of similar triangles. So you can only skip the tangent theta part. Just, just the skip steps? Because you want to throw yourself down the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> Do me a favor. Draw this out. This will take you approximately, you know, three seconds. And it will help you in, it will help you in the long run. Right? <laughs> Skipping steps will cause us bleeding. <laughs> so now we can 
substitute back into our equation, the x center of mass is equal to 2 over AB times the integral of x. Now, instead of having y, we can substitute in b over a times x, and we still have dx. What do we get when we take things out from underneath the integral here and cross stuff off? Pottero? Oh, sorry. I was I'm going to go from here to the next step. Just tell me how I can consolidate this. Um, x squared. We have x squared. I agree with that. Sure. But what about all this other stuff? Um, can you pull out the b over a? We can, and, what and then the b over b cancels yeah, out. So that we end up with 2 over a squared, the integral of x squared with respect to x. Which is something we can integrate. We need limits. What are the limits of this integral? In other words, what does x vary from? Henry? Going back to the picture, what does x vary from? Uh, 0 to a. It's going to, this little triangle, this um, rectangular mass dm, starts all the way down here with an x value of 0 and ends all the way over here with the value of a. Correct. So we, the <coughs> integral, bless you, is from 0 to a. So the x is center of mass. If we take the integral of this, we get 2 over a squared times x cubed over 3 from 0 to a. In other words, 2 times a cubed over 3 times a squared, or 2 thirds 